The Krakatoa volcano has been continuously erupting with intermittent low-level bursts of activity since at least April 15th of 2022. Then, on April 22nd at 5 p.m. local time, the data on the RSIM instrument, which measures overall seismic activity, suddenly spiked. This correlated to a sudden and dramatic increase in volcanic activity at Krakatoa's central vent, leading to a series of phreatic explosions due to the interaction of groundwater with shallow magma. Soon after, dramatic lava fountaining began, sending a near-continuous column of lava several hundred meters into the air. This material eventually fell back to the ground, creating a series of lava flows which moved down Krakatoa's slopes. By noon of April 23rd, one of these lava flows reached the western and southwestern portions of the overall island. This rapid lava effusion and lava fountaining subsequently transitioned to an ash-dense plume which rose to a height of 3 kilometers. What had just occurred was a paroxysm of the Krakatoa volcano, essentially a short yet violent burst in activity representing the volcano's largest eruptive event since April 11th of 2020. For context, the Krakatoa volcano is located in southwest Indonesia, where it is halfway between the islands of Java and Sumatra. The volcanic complex of Krakatoa consists of four distinct islands. The outer three islands represent the edge of a 9-kilometer-wide caldera which, according to preliminary evidence from local scientists, formed in a catastrophic eruption in either 535 or 540 CE. In the 1300 years following this collapse, a new volcanic cone grew out of the sea, rising to a height of 800 meters or 2,625 feet. This central island would later be destroyed in 1883 in a mid-NVEI-6 eruption, creating 35-meter-high tsunamis. After several decades of dormancy, a new volcanic cone grew out of the youngest caldera called Anak Krakatoa, finally emerging above the surface in 1927. Between 1927 and 2018, it produced frequent stromboli into volcanian eruptions, growing this new island to a height of 338 meters or 1,100 feet tall. However, during this time, eruptive activity slowly caused the southwestern slope of the volcano to become greatly oversteepened, leading to a large degree of structural instability. Then, on April 22nd of 2018, 260 million cubic meters of rock slid into the ocean, sharing another destructive tsunami. This obliterated a large section of Krakatoa's edifice above water, causing its summit to drop to a height of a mere 110 meters above sea level. In the years since, only small to moderate-sized eruptions occurred, creating a crater lake just above sea level. This week's eruption has quickly constructed a large, brand new cinder cone, most likely covering the crater lake, which was constructed to a height of 100 meters in a mere 48 hours. I do want to note that this figure is not official, but rather was an estimate given by several eyewitnesses who have been watching the ongoing eruption and compared the new cone's height to that of known features on the island. The rapid growth witnessed here may seem extreme, but has historical precedent. In 1943, a cinder cone known as Paracutan grew to a height of 50 meters in only 24 hours. This rapid growth phase caused some local residents to become worried about the possibility of another tsunami occurring. The good news is that a tsunami is highly unlikely and should not be worried about at this time. There is currently no long-term sign suggesting structural instability in the southwest slope, which triggered the last tsunami in 2018. At the present, the best indication of whether Krakatoa will show increasing or decreasing levels of volcanic activity are its sulfur dioxide emissions, as this correlates very strongly to the amount of shallow magma present. Krakatoa's sulfur dioxide emissions were only 28 tons a day on April 14th, but by April 23rd was releasing 9,219 tons a day. At the present, sulfur dioxide emissions are relatively stable, meaning that intense eruptive activity should continue. As a result, Krakatoa's alert level was raised from 2 to 3, and a 5 km exclusion zone was ordered around the volcano. Thanks for watching. If you would like to request a specific topic, please leave a comment below. Additionally, if you wish to support this channel, consider becoming a patron on Patreon.